Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on which time zone you're joining us from, and a warm welcome to each one of you. Thank you so much for taking your time to join this session. Right, so before I proceed, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Ms. Nehal Dhanashri. She's an experienced professional with over 22 years of expertise in training, mentoring, and coaching with a background in voice and non-voice based functions. Snehal has trained across various hierarchies in esteemed organizations like Capgemini, Accenture, and LNT Infotech, specializing in a wide range of topics including communication, time management, and leadership. Snehal has a passion for empowering individuals and teams. With proficiency in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Power BI, Snehal creates impactful training content. And uh, without any further ado, I would like to hand over the session to Ms. Nehal. Thank you so much. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants here. I hope you all can hear me. Comment? Audible? Yes, Nehal, you're audible. Visible? Yes, you're visible. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for a quick introduction of mine. And it looks nice. It's good to hear about yourself, right? Just to add on to what Somya uh, introduced me as, I... I'm in the fraternity from last 22 years, as she rightly said, and intend to be in the fraternity for the next 20 years, guys, right? So that is one important thing that I wanted to share. And um, it was when I decided that how I need to be in the industry by making my presence strong, right? And that is what we are going to look at it as to how do we stay in the market or in the fraternity for a longer time by building our online presence, right? As um, so let's begin. Are we all ready? Can I quickly get a yes in the chat box? Somya, you need to be uh, helping me today, uh, reading the chat for me. Would you please do that? Otherwise, I have to you know talk over the screen. Yes. Can so we ready? are getting the answers. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. People are ready. Yeah. Oh wow, that's nice. So guys, today we are we would be talking about building online service. Okay, Manish Jeff has raised hand. Uh, one disclaimer that I wanted to say, if you have any questions, please, please pack it towards the end of uh, the session and I'll be happy to assist. You might get your answer in the presentation. So Manish, if you still have a question, you can still raise your hand and I would be happy to answer you. Or give me a go ahead that we can start this session. Oh, it's okay, Manish. Uh, he says it was by mistake. No problem. Okay. okay. Right, but then I want to see a lot of hands up towards the end of the session, okay? Uh, having your questions asked. So guys, uh, today we would be talking about building online presence. And you know, when I when I talk about this building online presences, um, when I had not made my presence strong in the industry, you know, when I started working 22 years back, not very old, okay? It, again, as a disclaimer, not very, very old. I'm sure I, I've seen my parents, you know, probably, uh, or you have, you would have heard your parents telling you a story about how to go and get the jobs by wearing a suit, you know, by by going dressed in a room and then you have to introduce yourself and then go ahead with an interview and so on. Uh, but yes, I started my journey like that, right? I, I started my journey, you know, wearing the suit and going and giving interviews, getting myself dressed professionally and so on. Slowly and gradually as the market started changing, uh, we started discovering that we have entered a workforce in a different way. I remember when somebody told me apply online and I was like, apply online? How do I do that? Right? So I, I even asked him, don't you need my resume right now? And he said, no, absolutely not. Uh, and then that's when I started working on this, um, you know, digital footprint of how do I apply online? How do I make my presence strong? So it's so right said by Sara Nicole Nelson that you cannot buy an engagement. You must build one, right? And when I talk about online presence, it comes with different words. You can, you know, now the landscape is changing. I am sure if you have kids, you might have even filled the form via online right now, right? And I'm sure once you become grandparents, your kids would be really amazing that did you really tick the boxes on the form that you had submitted at the time of my admission? So, you know, it's an ever evolving um, uh, technology that we are in right now. And whatever it is, though you are, uh, you know, this, this session today is designed for people, for everyone here, right? So it is for the job seekers, it is for the entrepreneurs, freelancers, students, professionals in transition, and so on. 
so we would be talking about the importance of online presence personal branding we have discussed in the last session but yes we will give uh, a class of personal branding what is social media optimization it is very very important for me to understand linkedin mastery yes i will be helping you with tips and techniques of how to create your linkedin send your resumes and so on uh, we'll also help you with a couple of insights on online portfolio creation we would also look at if i have some leaders out there in the group we would be talking about the content creation and a thought leadership what is that all about a couple of things to take care of are the personal website essentials which is very very important because if i have to make my presence uh, online i have to take care of my online etiquette and privacy as well right but before i move ahead with my objectives i would like you to type in the questions that you have on this particular topic I would go back to my first slide and I want you to type in your questions about building online presence. It can be anything that you have it in your mind. The QA tab is enabled for everyone. You can use the QA tab or else you can use the chat option also. Is that fine, Snail? Oh, yes, absolutely. You just need to help me with anything. Sure, sure. Yeah. While we, while we curate our questions, guys, please understand what's the method of the future that you're looking for, right? It's, it's all that starts with curating our online presence, yes? right? There are many names for the online presence, a digital footprint, a personal brand, web presence, online profile, etc. No matter what you prefer to call it, it plays a very, very important role. So do let me know what questions you have before we begin this session. Are we typing in any questions? Not yet, Sneha. Yes, I received one. <clears throat> what should my competitive landscape look like on an online platform? Okay. It's from Ritan Jai. Okay. I'll take it to that. Yes, anybody else? Okay, there is one more question from Manish. If my contribution is limited to my company, then how can I brand myself online? Say that again, uh, read that again. If my contribution is limited to my company, then okay. how can I brand myself online? Okay. That's the question, yeah. You go. Right, let's type in our question. Oh, there is another question from Manish again. Mm -hmm. How can we keep our brand active online? Sometimes it become bigger challenge to have weekly feed. Right. Okay. Anybody else from the audience who have some questions, please use the chat option or question answers tab. The first question that was asked was about the social uh, media competitive analysis, right? Yes. Um. What should my competitive landscape look like? Okay. Yeah. So when we talk about that, uh, and that was from Rathinder, right? Yes, yes. So, Ritinja, is that what you want to understand? How do you keep it active uh, when, it's, uh, when it is compared to your competitors? A yes or a no? Yes. Yes, Nehal. Okay. So, while you are taking a note, while you are making a note of your, uh, the analysis that you do, right, the social media analysis that you do, just focus on a couple of three to four basic things, I would say right now. First, identify who your competitors are. The second thing and the most important thing is you identify which social media platforms they are on. Very, very important, right? And try to understand or analyze the social and content strategies that are working for you. For example, uh, if you are from an IT industry, probably you can write a lot of blogs on the topic that you're pretty interested in, right? It is not a competition that we are into. 
when we are talking about this social media, uh, you know, the landscape that we are talking about, it is all about understanding or finding gaps in your own social media marketing strategy, right? So identify the skill gap analysis, where can I be more effective? So the one has been in five bytes concept that I discussed last time, how, where, why, what, when, which is something that you can work on and you would be able to work on this landscape effectively. Okay, so I'm sure uh, the questions are coming in and you might get your answers, but surely I would be revisiting the questions once again for you after this session. So let's go ahead and start the session, right? A couple of questions that came to my mind was when I when I started working on this particular topic, I was like, how do you find what the internet knows about you? So, you know, there was a time I was reading about someone and I thought, okay, fine, let me type in my name and see where do I fit. There was nothing about me. So, you know, I felt, oh my goodness, I'm nowhere on the, you know, the online presence is completely zero for me. Uh, I started creating and it became a mess. It, as, you know, as, as somebody said that, you know, it, it becomes very difficult to keep uh, or feeding the updates on a weekly basis. I used to give a lot of time to, you know, I invested a lot of time in my social media uh, to make my presence strong. I started feeding everything and anything that came my way. Then I realized, how do I clean it up, right? How do I clean the mess and how do I... And then I started getting, uh, you know, the remarks, the uh, feedbacks from everywhere. 360 degree, I started getting a feedback. I thought, oh my goodness. At times it was get I was affecting I, I was getting affected with that as well. So I thought okay fine. How do I make it more private? How do I make it a very good online presence that stands strong for me, right? And how do I maintain it, right? So these are the basic questions that came to my mind before even I started working on my uh, online branding. So let's look at what is an online presence, okay? Or what does online presence can also be called as a digital footprint, right? So it is nothing but a broader picture of the identity that you have created online. Be it personal, professional, your internet presence changes each time you publish anything from your end, right? Either it can be a tweet, it can be a blog, it can be an interaction with anyone on this public online space. So in a nutshell, guys, your digital footprint or your online presence is something that helps you found who you are, what you are, right? Say, for example, I'm sure you might be on Twitter, you might be on Instagram, you might be on uh, Pinterest, and so on. Most of the time, if you are not sure of what we need to add, the whole information is online, right? Though it is a very great way to build your credibility and your reputation and showcase your brand, you need to be very, very careful, right? So please go ahead and ensure that whatever you add in on the online profile, you make you look at it and you make a note of it because these days employers do expect a lot of digital footprint especially if you are a developer or software engineer or if you're a techie right and if you're going to freelance if you're a freelancer by any chance your online presence is largely uh, getting attracted by the clients right uh, online presence is something where you can develop great relationships from the people from of your industry or the people who are you know related to your industry so for instance if you have relationship with blog writers if you have relationship with podcasters in your industry they might feature you in their content right so please ensure that the relationship in your industry will ultimately help you show online however you need to be really really careful of what do i add or how do i make my online presence strong now why it is strong right now i might have a very strong linkedin profile or i might have uh, a very strong online presence my it's very powerful it still helps me it still helps my people understand who i am right how do i build my trust how do i build my credibility how do i show that i'm passionate right or how do i a simple question how do i make myself stand out of the crowd all right or understand the flip technique of it right it can make me even stand out in a bad way it can even make me stand in a negative way for example, when you have forgotten to delete any profile picture of your Facebook from a party or from a place, and you're like, an oops, situation, I'm sure, you know, that, that becomes something which you really are to be known with a negative impression. So having in this demand sales and experience is great, right? But if people don't know what amazing skill sets that you come with, the jobs, the connections that you can build online, 
then it becomes a challenge, right? So put yourself out there where the world can see you positive, right? This online presence is a very strong networking tool, a strong one that goes a long, long way, guys, in helping you connect with more people, peers, influencers, and decision makers, right? So please ensure if you do not have a profile, I'm sure you all would have a profile right now. You all have your online presence to write that for you. However, you need to rework on that for us, right? And how do we do that? What do we take care of that? What is something that I add, need to add to build one of my profiles as the stronger one? It's something where you share your passions, right? If you want to, if you are a person from the hospitality or you, have, you want to have your great online presence, whether it can be you interacting with the Facebook people or you announcing a couple of things on Twitter, Insta, whatever it is, right? It would all, I would always request you to have your uh, passions shared. The more you share your passion, it really, really helps you, right? It helps people know what your interests are. It helps people know to get to know better, right? The more people you know about it, the further your online presence reaches. You never know who may be reading what you write. So write to impress your future employers, right? So share your passions, find your niche. When I when I say find your niche, it's all about making sure your online presence is unique and stands out from your potential competition. Have you ever noticed or have you ever voiced in style that's true for you? It's not one size that fits all, right? So most of the time, if I am working on my introduction, be it a part of LinkedIn, I'm talking about uh, writing a story. I'm confused most of the time. I do not know what do I need to write. So it's very, very important for you to look at the sites. I would share a couple of sites in my upcoming uh, you know, presentation wherein you can go ahead and you can build your profile in a very stronger way. When I talk about creating your own website, you can always highlight a couple of things like your education, your interest. You can highlight your skill sets. You can highlight your experience. Again, when you are highlighting your experience, let them be quantified, right? And in order to show what have you achieved. So your roles and responsibilities are right there, but we would also like to see what your achievements are, right? Build a professional brand. We have spoken about in the previous seminars of how do we build a brand. How do I build a professional brand is by creating a memorable and consistent information across the web page. Say, for example, the basic thing that you can think of is having a name to your brand. What is something unique about yourself, right? Depending on that, you can always create a catchy slogan, which describes your personality when you're creating a profile of your own, when you're creating your online presence. These are a couple of things that can help you. Think about privacy, use, and interest. Yes, these are some things that can help you to be more active online. Think about privacy is something very, very important. Be careful of your privacy online. You need to be aware of what can, who can see what. So Google yourself to see what your online presence looks like. But before you Google yourself, let's build a strong online presence. A couple of tips in the next slide that will help you to create your online presence. Many components are involved in the process of building a solid web presence, a strong web presence. Right? It's just not... I got a one day and I said, okay, let me go ahead and create a website for me. No, absolutely not. So a couple of few common and effective ways to improve your online presences, whether you have an online presence or you want to start it from scratch or you want to clean up your online presence, like we had a question, how do I manage my uh, online presence week or week, right? So this, these are one of the step processes that you can follow. Um, create a website, create a portfolio for yourself. I will show you. In the upcoming slide, how do we build a portfolio of yourself? So what is that something that you need to add into your portfolio where you can add your work, you can add your resume, you can add your contact information, make an about me page to introduce yourself, highlight your goals, as I already said, experience and your personality. So when you build a portfolio, try to be as creative as you can. Right? Uh, portfolios have always been very, very beneficial. I have experienced myself, uh, it helps you to get a lot of strong, it helps you to build a strong online presence. Uh, as I said, it helps you increase your visibility, credibility, and the industry. Talk about your, uh, share your portfolios with your friends, share your portfolios with the 
peers uh, within your team, your hiring managers and clients, because they always want to see something which is not there on your resume. So please do not have the similarities of things that are very common on your portfolio or on your resume, right? So have a different set of information in both the things, right? Steps to remember while you create a person website. Very, very important. Always remember of the elevator pitch, right? Um, if somebody accesses your web page or somebody accesses your portfolio, the most important thing that they would like to see is not your introduction with two, three paragraphs, right? It should be very crisp, clear, short, sweet, and simple, right? You should always be talking more about your uh, professional experience, as I've already said. Avoid adding your life story to it, right? Right? They definitely do not want to engage their time reading your life story. So you're not writing an autobiography here. Please keep in mind, just like the hiring managers, as we discussed the last time, they do not like to spend time on resume. Majority of people who are visiting your personal website, they aren't interested to spend hours clicking around. So keep it short and snappy. People will get much more from a too well-written paragraph rather than writing three four. Right? Nowadays, so... ChatGPT is all helping you to be more creative. However, I would love to write about myself because I know myself better than you know anybody else. So you can even take help of creative professionals and who create portfolios for you. You can always go ahead. If you're a designer, if you're an artist, if you are uh, a software developer, I am sure your work experience uh, can be quantified more, right? Uh, in your work experience, just keep one thing in mind. Do not write every piece of work that you have done, okay? You should think of your personal website as a curated gallery of your best work, right? And not a repository of everything that I keep adding into it. And this was one biggest challenge that I had when I was creating uh, my own uh, portfolio of adding all my projects into it. And then I lost the essence somewhere. And when I met someone and I showed them my website, it was like, it's a read to, you know, go ahead and read to. So please, let's not add anything and everything. It's only the quantifying responsibilities or experiences that you can add in there. Your social media presence, yes. I would say write blogs, get, get onto te testimonials because this is one person's site which is a great place to share your thoughts, philosophies related to the industry. You can share your ideas, write in the blog, to ensure that the language that you use is uh, a professional one. Try to engage with more people by you know, increasing your social media presence. Plus, your writing skills, if they are good, no, a bonus no matter what job you do, how you write, write it effectively. Just avoid a blog that you have in question for years. If you are limited, with some knowledge, let's not go ahead and try writing about it. I would say keep your hands off from it. If you're very sure of writing something, go ahead and start writing professional blogs, right? Testimonials is something that always helps us add that icing on our cake, right? Because it's from people who need to have worked in the past, right? And I'm sure they're the great way to make you look even more interested, um, especially if they're from a well-respected professional in the field or they are your manager, your peers, or anyone. So please ensure that you, you push people to you know, give you testimonials. Now, those testimonials, when you're asking someone, don't sound it like you're bragging, right? So your testimonials shouldn't sound like bragging. A page full of vague testimonials is something that's not going to help you, right? She's great. Or he's the best person in the industry. I have worked with and so on. No, absolutely not. So that'd be one simple reason can help us why you had added a value in that particular job. It would really help making your testimony strong. Any questions so far? These are a couple of websites right? uh, that I have got it. I would share each one of them in the chat towards the end of the session. Please go and visit these websites. They have various portfolios, amazing portfolios that you can take an example from. Right. When I talk about creating a portfolio or creating my online presence strong, I just need to keep one thing in mind, and that's my goal. I need to get interacted with more and more people. If I am into a business or if I am into a marketing field, I have to ensure that I get new clients, right? Because everybody is 
watching you or is looking at you. I also want to understand that how do I collaborate with the people on my project, the people in my industry, right? So I need to ensure that I focus on my specialization, the roles that I have played at various levels, the personality that I come with, the style that I chose for myself, my accomplishments, my awards, my winners, right? So please make uh, a note of it that you write all about adding your accomplishments, the personality, uh, your various experiences in a way wherein you are quantifying each and every uh, attribute of yours. Somewhere, do we have any questions? Guys, if you have any questions, please type in or uh, let me know if I'm good to move ahead. Um, yes, Nehal, we have the questions which we got in initial stage. So do you want to take that up? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, it's a question from Manish Jain, as I said earlier. So if my contribution is limited to my company, then how can I brand myself online? You can talk about a lot of other activities that you're involved in, Manish. Right? I'm sure you might have been a part of some volunteering experience or uh, something that you would have done towards. I I'm sure we all are creative and uh, you know we contribute some way or the other to the society. It's just that we need to sit and rethink about it as to what have I done or what value have I added apart from the roles and responsibilities in my organization. And I'm sure you can add that as your volunteer experience. Uh, thank you, Sneel. We have another question from Tarun Kumar. He says, wanted to have transition as Scrum Master and I was working as team lead uh, for now. Okay. How to show showcase and get into it? And he also says, because I just did PSM certification and uh, even though I was involved in Scrum method methodologies, I did not apply the exact role in there. So what exactly is that you want to understand? How would you transition your process one one framework to another or how is what is it yes that is the question Sneha. okay to have transition as a scrum master okay so i you were working as a team lead right i would i would request you to add all the quantifying experience of yours as a team lead not saying that i manage a team uh you know effectively i manage a team of 20 plus people you know maintaining 80 percent of accuracy at sales or something whatever it is so quantify your experience uh, with each and every responsibilities of your, and then you show the transition that how can you use those achievements in this Scrum uh, a journey of yours, right? When you're applying for a uh, Scrum Master, how would you apply those learning things? Uh, that is very important. So the transition from one development to another one, it has to have a bridge of your accomplishment. Add as much as you can on your portfolio. Add as much as you can on your LinkedIn profile, guys. If you have to toot your horn, you have to be uh, be very positive with what you have done. Every single thing that you do, identify. Is it a responsibility? Is it an achievement? Once you start understanding what's the responsibility, what's an achievement, I am sure you will have a lot of con content to add on your portfolio or you have a lot of content to add on your LinkedIn. That is one area where people do not understand what do I add, and they just add the roles and responsibilities, which was nothing which adds new value to your transition. Talk about the journey of your transition. I would I would say in the about section on LinkedIn, you can always talk about the journey of you being a team leader for and moving towards the scrum master. How was the journey? You might have done it from. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, a learning partner. Talk about that learning partner of yours. If you had done it from upgrad, talk about the journey of your your upgrad journey. Does that help? Yes. Um, yeah. Anything else that we have said? Was that helpful? Yes, he says yes. Thank you, Snehal. Okay. And yes, we have another question uh, from Deepti. Is it mandatory to have a premium subscription on platforms like LinkedIn in order to develop a noticeable and optimized LinkedIn profile? Nothing comes for free with the team. User, will my profile still reach the right recruiters? It's, it's a technique that you need to understand how do I make it more strong, right? I'm sure uh, I have no idea how much 
uh, premium uh, we need to pay. I think it's fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred. Depends on the packages that you have on LinkedIn, right? But yes, DC nothing comes for free. So I personally would not suggest you to go ahead and take a subscription for uh, some time, right? Uh, if you really want to be active on LinkedIn, there are other ways of your profile getting uh, looked onto, right? And I'll let you know how do we do that. Right? So yes, if you want, you can always go ahead with the premium. Uh, but let's see how do we how do we uh, make our profile active first on LinkedIn, right? I'll come back to your question in some time. Is it okay if I move ahead and help you understand what features can we add on a portfolio website or on our LinkedIn uh, web page that really makes it more interesting? Can we move ahead? A quick yes or a no? Yes, yes, Nihal. So exactly what to put in a portfolio depends on your industry. It depends on the niche and goals that you come with. So feel free to cherry pick. Right? Feel free to add things that, as I said, can be quantified, right? Some portfolio content ideas are a must have, right? So ensure that you have a strong logo and a tagline, right? Where people can come and uh, see what you can offer them the most, right? So that is a very, very important thing. Site design is something uh, wherein you have a very clear and concise resume design, which is very important no matter what. But if you're into a designing uh, uh, profile or a development profile, it becomes even more significant because that shows your work on your own portfolio, right? Uh, style elements, something that you can always add. Relevant skills, very, very important. When The most important thing that you need to remember, guys, is when you're creating a portfolio online, tell stories. There's much more engaging than facts, right? Why would we why would we trust brands? Right? Why would we trust faces that goes with brands? Because it makes us connect to a human, right? So your portfolio website should have a picture, relevant details, your uh, background headshot, whatever. It has to be really, really impressive. And the most important thing, it has to be professional, right? Please add a contact number only and only if you are comfortable, right? Nowadays, most of us are getting in touch with uh, an email, right? Uh, your specialities and services you offer, a words, please toot your horn with uh, lots and lots of achievements. Now, please do not go and add an achievement like, you know, I got the first prize in Rangoli competition, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's not an achievement, but yes, it's something that doesn't go with the profile of yours. So try and have some honors, try and have some awards, or try and have some contribution to the field of yours. I'm sure that's going to help you. You can create lots of blogs and videos also, right? Videos is something that's quite safe to upload on, right? You can talk about a journey. You can explain a topic if you want to. It's just that you need to take care of a lot of things when you're creating a video. And there should be no noise. The background should be plain. You should be very comfortable, comfortable making an eye contact and so on, right? Um, testimonials, yes, we have discussed. Relevant groups and communities, please understand that we are a part of this fraternity, we are a part of this community. And if we have to grow in this, we have to engage ourselves. We have to understand that relevancy is our key. Right? Now, when I say that, please do not treat this as your Instagram profile. Right? Um, when when I even talk about your testimonials or review, you're signing in your praises, it's good for everyone, whether you are experienced or you are starting your career. With, right? It is good that you have, you add it. Uh, be as engaged as you can. That's the most important thing, right? If at all you're quantifying, uh, do not quantify saying my new homepage design helped me increase a number, right? So probably you can talk about it in percentage, right? So quantify your engagement, quantify your experiences. Again, I'm, I'm focusing more on this is because only and only then people would look at, at the numbers, right? Look at this. How does this look? He has created a, a, a website or a portfolio about himself. So he has mentioned about work, contact, blog. And this is something that he has written a short story of himself. Look what I can do. He is talking about his skill sets, things that I love. A very simple way of creating your own web page. Go through it.
So he has written, I'm obsessed with making things and even making more, even more obsessed with making things better. So probably that's the goal that he comes with, right? Then he talks about his strength. He talks about his education. After graduating from the University of Kentucky, I have been actively involved in the web design community. So he talks about his strength. He talks about the uh, education that he comes with. He talks about his experience. He talks about his passion. That's the seed formula that we most of the time use when we are a part of an interview as well, right? S-E-A-P, that stands for strength, education, experience, achievement, and passion, right? Which is very, very important. Let's look at this. Where I've been, what I'm doing, what I hope to do. Such a clarity of who the person is. A picture would have been better. Uh, this person has even added a lot of links so that people can go ahead and visit the work. Guys, please go ahead and do that. That's going to make your uh, portfolio look different. It could stand out strong. You can talk about the exhibitions. You can talk about the awards and so on. Need to avoid three important things while you are building your online presence, right? Please, please do not complain about the current situation. Do not talk about your bosses, your co-workers, your job. I'm not happy with XYZ company. So please, let's restrict ourselves. Uh, another most important thing is avoid posting pictures which are personal. Please understand it's not Insta, Twitter, Facebook. It's uh, your online presence or the website or the portfolio that we're talking about is something very, very professional. Uh, stay away from insults and drama. No drama while you write or while you blog, right? So please ensure that the language that you use is very, very positive. You focus on the keywords and uh, focus on creative, being creative. Are we clear? Do you have any questions of how do I build my portfolio effectively. Before we move to the social media optimization, how do I make it? How do I make my presence stronger? But have you understood how do we create a portfolio? Everyone, yes, no. Any questions that you have? Any questions from the audience regarding this portfolio? There was a question that was asked, how do I clean my, or how do I add my, uh, you know, post weekly? Um, yes. Social media optimization is nothing, guys, but it's a process of improving your social post. And why do we do that? It's simple to achieve better results. So faster following growth, high levels of engagement that I want to look for. I want to look for, look for more clicks on conversions on my account, right? So optimizing social media, whether it's for business or it's for person, it has various different techniques and tactics, right? And uh, the basic improvement on an individual post level is asking an engaging question, right? So ensure if you are writing something, you have, I'm sure if you're writing it on a very positive note, you will have your followers at a faster rate. Please understand your audience on a deeper level. Redefine your tone, redefine your brand tone. Brand tone is your personal brand, right? If you're working now on social media. Increase your awareness on social media as to what do you do, what have you done recently? What have you achieved? This is something that can help you be more uh, productive than the other one, right? Improve your reach on social media. Try and tag out to the people from your industry or from the ones that are similar to. Improve the quality of your leads from social media. Very, very important. Every time you look at your uh, online presence as a critic, it is something that I can do better. How can I make it more interesting, right? If you have be in marketing and you are selling your products and services through these social channels, you ensure that you put the right information. And with these many things, you can always increase your engagement rate. There are some strategies that, that we follow for engagement, what we discuss for follower growth. Now, it's very, very important for me to understand that I need to post the thing at the right time. To get anywhere on social media, you need to have the consistency 
on posting high quality content, right? That your audience likes. There should be no ambiguity in what you write. And not even writing, but also I need to understand when do I post. So there are certain times of the days and week that your audience is more likely to be online. So analyze. Have a study of when are the recruiters looking for the profiles, on which days are they more active. On Fridays, generally they are lesser active. So Mondays are the ones when they are looking out for new opportunities. So try and be more active on the Mondays. Try and write, try and post your uh, social media content online on that particular day, wherein you are more likely to start your social content or you are more likely to get a response with a comment, right? So please, please analyze and figure out those special times where your social media, which is a hard work, can turn out to be a very smart work, right? Um, get into various conversations, conversions, right? Ask questions in your post. If at all you are a developer, right? And you are not able to find a particular way or you're not able to find a solution for something, you can always start a conversation of how do we get this done in a better way, right? Once you start the conversation, I'm sure uh, the followers would react to it and your engagement rate gets higher, right? Because this social media is one of the first things or first bio of yours that the potential leads are to be visiting, right? So it is essential that you have this as polished as possible. Who you are, what your business does, what do you do, the topics that you're interested in, your brand tone, and so many other stuff is when you have to see how someone can get in touch with you is the most important thing. Or what is the point of me adding a blog and not writing? Feel free to connect me on the given below ID. Right? So please ensure that you work on these five strategies of engaging in the right way, understanding when do I be active, on which days I need to be active. How can I improve or how can I increase my follower growth? Guys, please remember one thing, you will not get followers only because you are writing something or which can be from an open source, right? You would get only and only a follower when you add value to something, right? Have your conversions, uh, depending on the interaction that you have, have accessibility to your learnings or to your blog. If you're adding any material on the website, please go ahead and you know give them an access to go through it. Um, and I'm sure the overall performance rate would be better than what you would have thought. So these are some of the social media strategies that you need to take care of. Aviksha, any questions before I move into the very important, very, very important uh, social media site that is LinkedIn, right? And everyone from LinkedIn nowadays, right? Everyone with over 875 million users, guys, which are growing faster, probably, you know, more than that is somewhere when, when somebody asked me to join LinkedIn, I was like, I am on Monster, I am on Nokri, why do I need LinkedIn, right? And when I when I joined on LinkedIn, I I understood that this is this is a platform with so much of competition out there. I have to stand somewhere out, right? And the best way for me to raise my visibility among the people, among my training fraternity, or having a knockout profile was by creating a personal brand which was on LinkedIn, right? It's very, very important for, you know, when, when I started working on LinkedIn, I thought, what is the something I need to add? What is the something really matters to me? My vision, my purpose, my value, my passion. Know what I'm in common with my peers or with my competitors. But at the same time, what makes me stand out, right? So this LinkedIn profile page, guys, is the foundation for your personal branding. And we regularly add features to increase capabilities as a personal marketing platform, which kind of gives you a signal as to are you being noticed in the market or not. There are a lot many people who come and tell me, say, hey, I created my profile on LinkedIn, but I've never got a message. I don't know why. Because you haven't connected to the right opportunity at the right time, right? A couple of things when I started working on LinkedIn, I was like, what's in it for me? Why should I create? I then realized that it's seven times more likely I'm to be found with a profession picture of mine and not a very new picture, right? If I complete my LinkedIn profile and if I on my creator mode on, I am sure that I have been noticed more in the market. There are 100 million job applications, guys, and 72% of people or the recruiters are using LinkedIn for hiring. A couple of facts when I went to the, when I went to you know, research on LinkedIn, that it turned 20 years in 2023, right? 
Uh, the most fascinating fact was there are 900 million users. The number of companies listed was 58.4 million. I was like, wow. Every 96, uh, the applications, 90 applications are submitted. And it spans over 200 countries and territories. So I was like, I can get a job from anywhere, right? There are 87 million millennials, which made me think that, yes, yeah, you are not out of the industry, you are still there. You can still see a lot of respect for your session. So eight people are hired every minute. Uh, I had a question, can I be the one of them, right? Uh, however, I, I tried working on it and for a couple of time, I was not having the right idea. Then I realized that there are a couple of steps that I need to remember on the minute. And guys, this is a very, very important step. I'm sure you might be aware of this. You might even have your LinkedIn profiles that you keep be up updating. Please go through this. It's very, very important for you. Choosing the right profile picture for your LinkedIn is very, very important because your profile picture is your calling card, right? It's how people are introduced to you and it governs an impression for the start. So please ensure you have a very professional picture. I'm not asking you to, you know, take a picture with your ties and suit. Absolutely not. Ensure that your picture has a front facing, not the side ones. And uh, not with the shades, not with the funky hairstyle, not with bright colors on you. It should be a professional picture with the right background photo. Now, your background photo is the second visual element at the top of your profile page. It grabs people's attention to set the context and it talks a little more about what you have done, right? It helps to engage the attention, guys, and makes it more memorable. Make your headline very, very important. There is no such rule as to add a description to your headline, uh, which is at the top uh, of your profile page, but it also helps the people to understand who you are and what have you been doing, right? So what company have you been applied for? Say, for example, you are working with Capgemini as a full stack developer. So you can say full stack developer from a Capgemini. You can, uh, you know, draw a line and you can talk about the full stack developer or whatever it is, right? So you have to have a clarity of your headline. Please ensure having the right headline, it ensures that you get found by your recruiters, right? You can get a relevant job since a lot of them only search by title, right? So please ensure that you include profession specific skills and titles which are catchy most of the time. Not too long, not too short, guys. Summary to your story, which is very, very important. The first thing to say about your LinkedIn summary is make sure you have fun. It's amazing how many people still leave this field blank. I have no clue. That's the about section to it. And I'm like, we haven't added anything to it. So your summary or your about section talks a lot about yourself. It's a short story of you. Um, and there are different ways to write it. One thing that I would say, don't be afraid to invest time in writing the story of yours. Try a few drafts. Run your summary to people. This is your most personal piece of content marketing and it is work, right? So please, please ensure that your summary should talk about your skills, your awards, your achievements, your journey. You can even start your summary or your about section with two objectives that describe yourself. For example, if I have to write about myself, a positive-minded, enthusiastic training professional coming with an experience of 22 years in the industry of training, coaching, mentoring, an NLP certified practitioner dealing with XYZ topics and so on my journey goes. Then towards the end of it, you can always add the passion and the value to your summary. It allows you to add 2000 plus words. I think more than 800, 900 words is good for your summary, right? Grow your network, declare war on buzzwords. Buzzwords are nothing but the adjectives that are used to offer in LinkedIn headlines. Uh, it helps you to summarize uh, at times, for example, uh, a couple of buzzwords would be like leadership, focus, strategy. These are the power words, right? Especially these are the power words. Um, I'm not saying that you cannot describe uh, them, but yes, when you add them, it, it adds value to your profile. Share relevant content. We have discussed that a lot. Turn on the creative mode. This is very, very important, right? Uh, there is a Creator mode right in the resource section of yours, right? It is a profile setting that can help you grow your reach and influence on LinkedIn. You can turn on the creator mode and this is something 
Satkana helps you to get access to additional tools and features where you can create your content and grow your audience based on LinkedIn. Most of the times, people would update the LinkedIn profile. However, the creator mode would be off. So please ensure once your profiles are updated, you can go ahead and on your creator mode. A couple of examples that I've got for you guys here. A LinkedIn summary. It's very, very simple. Your summary is the place where you really want to get into the details, right? Distill what you have learned. Uh, talk about your achievements, talk about your values, passion, strengths, opinions, personality, and so on. Any questions, guys? This is the most important aspect in your LinkedIn summary. Write your goals, write your short term goals, write your long term goals, write your key accomplishments that reflects your skill. Please, please don't be afraid to let your personality shine through life. This is something very, very important. You can start with the years of experience in your current field, your current job title, what you've excelled at, your accomplishments, and so on. What kind of role you are looking for, also you can mention in this. See, towards the end, he has mentioned, for more information about my work, check out on my website, blah, blah, blah. So please ensure that you add a detailed information like this. Ensure the do's and the don'ts, please look at this. Make it between three and five paragraphs long. Uh, kind of try and make it as a paragraph. I would not say as a pointer because it would look like more of your roles and responsibilities. So kind of add a very personal touch while you are writing. Be very clear, use concise statements, bullet points when needed, right? Be specific with the numbers. Add as much as numbers that you want to. Don't make it too short, especially the one-liners. People would not get single message out of it, right? Neither you make it too long. Uh, do not cut, copy, paste your summary from somebody else. It's never going to help us, right? Somebody asked me, how do I still, uh, without going ahead with the subscription, how can I still build my profile stronger, right? Uh, Sonia, that was a question that we had, right? Do I really need to take the subscription that I that I want to go for? Yes, Nehal. Yes. So guys, networking network is a key to success. Right now, at times, what you can do is when you when you're looking for a particular job in LinkedIn, right? And you want to connect to that person. Uh, there are two ways of getting connected, right? You can either send him a message or you can send him an email. How the message can be? Here is an example right in front of you. So this message would give you a very small, uh, it will allow you to add a very small description. So you can always go with the first one. The second one can be an email that you can send it to them. How to use LinkedIn? These six steps are going to help you understand, set a goal for yourself, have a goal statement, add it to your LinkedIn, connect with the people who are in the best of the position, join the group, share a lot of content, Guys, but please be very, very mindful of what you share, right? Use advanced search, advanced search for looking out for jobs and many more opportunities for yourself. Please try and get connected to the people of your industry. I'm sure that's going to help you build your network stronger. People who come with no experience, please don't be afraid of being upfront about wanting the work experience. You can always tell your headline can always be uh, a graduate with special interest in X, Y, Z things, right? And you can always write about your goals. So what you need to do, if you are with no experience, please pay attention to your skill set. As I rightly said, if you are a, a volunteer, if you have if you have done some volunteering experience, if you come there, quantify that volunteer experience, share your interest, areas of interest, and mention, mention any personal project that you have worked on, right? Job offers via LinkedIn. There's a career interest bar. Click off to turn it on. This is where people do not even get to know whether you're looking out for a job. So you have done everything. You have added the keywords. You have written a story. Your creator mode is on. Let recruiters know you are open for job is something where you go ahead to the career interest. You click off the button to turn it on. Let me also take you through how does a job for the recruiter's uh, search panel look like. So they look for the job title, they look for the scales, they look for the industry, and they look for the keywords. This is more important, guys. The keywords is the most important thing and relevant to your industry. Get to know 
what words and skills are being used in that particular job description. And then you go about it, right? You have to be as authentic as you can. And use those keywords that describes you effectively. Very, very important. For example, see this person. He has used the right keywords, project manager, marketing, advertising, project manager, and so on. So I am sure this candidate will likely be shown up in a recruiter search for a lot of various queries. He has been a part of marketing, if you can see here, he has been a part of advertising, his position, and so on. Right? Your headline can be like this. When I was talking about a digital marketing manager, this makes or this helps the person identify what you are. If you are a student, you can please go ahead and buy something like this. Experience, I would say recruiters would really like to see a continuity in your work history. Uh, sometimes these employment gaps are the red flags for us, right? However, if at all you have a gap on your resume or in your LinkedIn profile, please ensure that you write about your achievements or your learnings, right? If you have seen initiated a targeted campaign that resulted in a 15% upswing in a newsletter registration. You can always write with the action verbs that defines your job effectively. Start with an action verb, right? Follow it with a specific task and use numbers whenever possible. Guys, are we clear till here? Before I take you to the LinkedIn resume assistant. This is something, an easiest way to make a resume in MS Word. I wasn't aware that for a longer time, but yes, when I was going through this LinkedIn session, when I attended a webinar, I understood that yes, I can go ahead and create a resume. I can create my resume with the help of resume assistant. So this really helps you to, you know, create a profile of yours based on the information that you key in. How do we do that? You have to go and click me in the right top where you view your profile. You need to edit using the pencil icon. You need to scroll down to the very bottom. If you have your resume right ready, you can always go ahead and you know attach it. If at all you do not have a resume ready and you want to create one, these are the steps. You always can go and select, build a resume from the drop down, and you can create from your profile. Are we clear with this? A uh, couple of takeaways that your LinkedIn profile should be full of your keywords, right? Please ensure that you add it to your headline, summary, skill set, and a description of your past jobs. Have a nice professional picture with a good background photo. You can get a lot of backgrounds on Canva uh, as well, guys, canva.com. Ensure that your headline uh, grabs the recruiter's attention. LinkedIn summary to be paid attention to, and the key is network, network, and network. Right? Are we clear with the LinkedIn? Are we clear how do I build my portfolio? Uh, any any leaders in my uh, group right now, or managing a team? Anyone? A quick yes or a no? I don't see is yes. Okay, so. I'm sure, and I and I kind of I would be looking for uh, you know these people who are there uh, right involved with me right now can be the leaders for the tomorrow. Uh, just to ensure that how do we project ourselves on the uh, with this topic of thought leadership. So this is very simple, you know. Uh, a thought leader is someone who has who comes with a knowledge and experience that kind of gives a uh, you know impact that creates an impact on others, right? It is one of the best ways of spreading your leadership ideas to the other people, right? Now, people are looking for you online. You can always, uh, they, they look at towards the leaders in, in some way as their role models, right? So you always have to ensure that you're very creative to what you write. Uh, for example, if they're searching for careers, insights, it's about life, or you know, they want to learn new hobbies, 
there are some of the things that you can add it from your end to shorten the attention span, right? So when I say that, it's very, very important for you to understand that how do I create my thoughtful content for this leadership, right? Like, as you see, Steve Jobs is one of the leaders who is the founder of Apple and is known to be a thought leader in technology and innovation. A lot of times, uh, while we go and do a little research or we follow some people, who are they? Those are the leaders, right? So what are we looking at, right? Please go and look at their profiles of how they create the content, right? How they kind of, you know, their content looks so different from others. They know the audience well. How do I engage myself? How do I build my network? These are the four things that I need to look at, right? And when I talk about, uh, you know, it goes without saying that your content generation needs to be of high caliber. It needs to be shared on a regular basis. It should not be something that I wanted to share about one of my experiences and then I uh, I'm not active on my LinkedIn for months together. No, absolutely not. So you need to ensure that whatever you are writing, you know, you have to post it in uh, the periodical way so that people are connected with you, right? Three types of social media content, guys. Right? Please try and add the videos, the photos, and right, make use of the word. There had been a statistic that showed 54% of the marketers agree that video is the most powerful form of social content. Now you would have a question saying, well, what do I create a video on? You can create a video on any topic that is very close to you. You can even create a video uh, wherein you are trying to coach someone or teach or you are trying to you know, explain a particular topic, but be ensured that uh, it's very clear. Your words uh, play the most important role when you are working on your video, uh, adding to your LinkedIn profiles or on your social media website. The upcoming seminar is all about how do I even create my video resume, which is very, very important, right? Hosting, if you're hosting live videos, uh, it's another way of engaging your uh, audience and giving them the insights of your life, ideas, the ethics, the beliefs that you come with, right? So you can add all those details in your video when you can share. You can add a lot of details in your photos, right? Which are most, you might have seen there are a lot of pictures taking the, uh, the prizes or the awards being shared, right? Um, please ensure that the pictures that you share on the website or the images, uh, that goes with a unique hashtag. It goes with a caption that talks about your journey. What would I say with the words? It is one of the best ways to develop a tone, a voice, a branding tone on a voice, rather, I would say. Ensure that you come up with your own values and share it in, in a very, you curate it in a very positive way. And uh, I'm sure you would be able to stand out with the different profiles that you see online. Four things, please keep very, very important because social networks and online apps are currently the most popular communication tools, right? Uh, most of the time, we often forget the etiquette of adding a content on it. Please ensure that you have the right professionalism, the right interpretation of your words, your ideas, your motives, and so on. Let's not be, uh, you know, very personal with our conversations, right? Ensure that, you know, your conversational nuances and partnerships are there in your tone or in your personality so that you please take care of, uh, keep your communication short. Please, please ensure that uh, with your relationship details, your communication, you do not create a drama or uh, something that, you know, ends blocking you up on a social media website. So please ensure that this online etiquette is something that you follow throughout. Please remember, uh, one statement that I would like to share is anything more is better of it. Okay. So please do not do that. Use the online uh, platform wisely, effectively, uh, which can help you be more effective presenting your skills and abilities. Any questions that you have? It's a very, very thank you for listening to me, which is not an easy job, right? Um, yes, Nihal, we have uh, a question from Prajul. Okay. Yes. Uh, will LinkedIn assessments help in the overall reach of one's LinkedIn profile? Yes, it really helps. It helps. 
Okay, so he has another question. He is um, updating our LinkedIn or Nowkri profiles mm -hmm. on a daily basis will really help us to increase the relevant engagement more. Not on a daily basis. Once in a fortnight is good enough. Do not overburden your profile with lots and lots of tweets and uh, blogs on that note. Please ensure that more than quantifying, you qualify whatever you write. So quality is the most important factor that you work with. In the day. Thanks, Nihil. So Manish uh, says, thanks, Nihil, for your time. It was a great session. Good insights. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Any Manish. Any other questions? Um, any other questions from anybody? Yeah, uh, so there's a question from Albright. Uh, mm -hmm. Some Agile coaches are saying they can help us secure our first Scrum jobs. How true is that? Some, some Agile coaches are saying they can help us secure our first Scrum jobs. How true is that? I have never experienced it, Albright. It is very true. And it would be difficult for me to you know comment on this. Because I have not come across and I have not seen somebody telling like this to me, but I would say beware. However, this is a very trusted platform, so I don't think something like this can you know, go ahead. But try, try it out. Be very careful of what you share and how you share. However, I'm so sorry. I would not be really able to help you with this because I haven't come across that. But what I can do is I can surely get the information from my resources. Oh, yes, everybody are saying thank you. Thank you for the informative session. Yes, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. So you have a wonderful uh, week ahead. Keep making your profile strong. Uh, be more creative and keep talking. Yes, thank you, everyone, thank you so for taking your time and joining the session. And also I have um, shared you the session links here so uh, our website link just a minute i would you know i just wanted to share one slide with them which had a lot of portfolio examples on it right so can i do that yes yes Daniel. sure to everyone they can go ahead on these websites and they can always for how to do it Right, please uh, you know, go ahead and copy. There are a lot of more, but I could uh, gather some of them for you for somebody, the front end developer, the mobile app developer, the full stack developer, UX designer, technical writer. Probably you can always create your profiles having an understanding with these websites. Anyone else who is from a different industry altogether? can always look in for more information and, you know, get an idea as to how do we create it. So let's start building our presence online. But however, do not miss on creating your personal uh, connect as well, guys, right? So take care. Have a nice week ahead and keep talking. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah. Can or I... okay if I leave? Yes, Nihil. Thank you so much for the insightful session thank you everyone for joining the session i've already shared uh, the link of the website uh, we have a couple of more sessions coming up so please visit the link and get registered for the session yes thank you see you soon guys